the good news is, found the blade. So let's turn this into a tutorial. Don't need to remove this, but I'm just going to remove it just for clarity's sake. So first you need to do is to undo that and oh, there you go. Got to be careful because your fingers. But yeah, I think this is. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, I can put my fingers on that. It's still sharp, but it's just probably just a bit dull from years. I mean, it's been a few years since this been changed, and I love this band, so it's a bit of a water course. You can recycle things like this, you know, if you want to use them as scrapers or uh, sculpting tools, but yeah, for now, this is probably best just to be binned and out of the way. Oh, that made a cool noise. Now, as you can see, these things do gather up a lot of dust. And I don't have the shop back down here at the moment, but I'm going to take the opportunity to get the old dustpan and crush. Yeah, I use this for a lot of MDF. So it's like. These things get filled with so much crap, so it's, it's probably way past due. You know what? I'm lazy. I put some fans on for that. Yeah, that's a shop tip. <laughs> if you're too lazy to dust something, just use an airbrush. <laughs> now, before we pop the band on, first one to do is release this tension. Because basically tension is what helps it spin and rotate. And the rotor's here. Second important thing, there's a screw right here. I just need to make sure I've actually got a big enough, the right screwdriver. Oh, that's right, that's it. Wing nut here. Now, it's obviously that keeps. That's it. So yeah, it feeds through there, down there, through there. It's fairly simple to install. You just gotta be very careful. If you're not sure, if you're not so sure, if you're not so sure, uh, you know, don't do it. Definitely, kids, don't do this at home. You can get an adult to destroy their fingers for you, and maybe. Whoever designed paper twist tires can go rot in a fire. There we go. Now, I've got to be very careful. As you can see, it's spring-loaded already. So I'm just going to very carefully... Because you, you don't want to kink it. Ha, ha, ha. You don't want that happening. Oh! Let me just count them. Five. Five. That's all good. I, mean, I love those videos with that guy who does all those like high voltage electronics and always blowing shit up. But this is definitely, you know, don't try this at home territory. Now, obviously, very obviously, make sure 
the pointy bits are pointing this way. I don't think there's a particular, well, it's not a real particular way they can't go on because essentially they're always going to point down. It's a saw after all. So I might need to. <laughs> So here I am with this extreme close-up because I'm trying to fix this bandsaw and I really could have set this up better but uh, yeah in this particular day of fail uh, this should be moving as the tension For some reason, this is not moving at all. So essentially, you tighten the tension up to get it to grip. But this ain't moving. And that could be why. <laughs> Okay, bandsaw is on. Seems that, yeah, as much as I was tightening and loosening that, it wasn't moving, so it's sort of just been stuck from all that time that was there. Uh, I used a very, very, very specific tool for this. It's not just a tool you can find anywhere, so yeah, I'd highly recommend, you know, talking to a specialist to find this tool to try and fix that error and try and get that down. So anyway, the belt's on now, it's feeding through all right. Make sure it's yeah. going through these two pin trollers. It's round that, it's moving, and then you can just start tightening it up. As you see, that's now moving. You should start seeing those kinks start going. You don't want it too tight. That's probably about it. You still want it to be able to move. Oh, it's going to be moving that way. Okay, just, just want to hand tighten it. You don't want, you don't want it too tight because then it will snap. We don't want this to be too loose because obviously it will wobble and snap easier. So let me give it some. You can, you can kind of tell when it's ready because it will stop. Probably about it. That's getting very taut. Okay. Well, the thing is, of course, because it's on the outside, if it's not cutting very well, or if it's you know, you know, it's digging in, it might not be taut enough. So, yeah, best to under torque it a little bit, just in case. But that's. There's no real definitive, I've never seen anything definitive on this, it's really, you just don't want it to, you want it to be able to move, and you don't want this to be wobbling too much, that's, I'm going to leave it like that. So that's all closed up. Close them both up. Put the other really expensive part on here. With that other ultra spe specific tool. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be super duper tight. It's really only just making sure that that blade doesn't come swinging out through the protective covering. 
Yeah, I don't know. But it needs to be, it doesn't need to be flush, it just, if anything, it needs to sit a little bit under. As long as it's not popping up and fucking your work. All right. I need I need a test piece. Also forgot. Yeah, I moved that down just because I. Uh, you can have this as far down as you want. That's just going to help that blade. Actually, I'm going to set that. It doesn't have to roll exactly on there. I'll just raise it a little bit higher. I had to move this once because I was dealing with like two, an inch thick piece of wood. And this doesn't quite clear it. So I had to remove all that, but I'll put it back on. So yeah, I probably should have set that, adjusted that height as well. But. That seems to be working on my, just. Just a little bit more. That's a good sound. That's the sound you want to hear. Ooh. Yeah, that's working. Let's cut this. This is one of those slow and steady wins the race things. Uh, I can actually cut on the outside of the line because I know I'm going to be going over this with a file so I can flatten that out. And again, it doesn't matter if it's too perfect. But after all that shenanigans, I'm finishing up for the night. I'll finish this up tomorrow. I've still got to mark out where I want to do the drill holes and where it's got to be cut out. Uh, so yeah. I managed to find the blade, fix the bandsaw, and cut out the piece. And not screw that up this time. Um, as I said, failure is always an option. You, you can try and account for it. Sometimes things just go wrong. Sometimes a, a bandsaw blade just snaps. Sometimes, you know, the thing you thought was going to work in this instance just didn't. If I was to use the uh, Dremel on this, I might actually end up doing that after I drilled out these holes. I might just go over the Dremel just because this is probably just wide enough to just get in there to flatten them out a bit. It just saves me a whole bunch of time filing. But I definitely have to use a pair of pliers because that will. Whoop, these are cool pliers, you just adjust them and pop a bit too much there. Snap them down and I can hold that. I can probably even do that. I'll probably even do that when I'm coming to drill stuff. I'll just get a blanket wood, pop on there, drill, 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 drill. Turn around, drill, drill, drill. Because, uh, yeah, it's still metal, it's still going to get hot. But that's for another day. Uh, honestly, I didn't really have a plan for coming down here. I just want to get started on the buckle. I was hoping to be a lot more advanced through that. I probably wasn't going to finish it today. But now I've got a lot more stuff to do tomorrow. Um, might just do a bit of graphite rubbing. And we'll call it a day.
Let's see how we go with the new gloss coat on the primer. So, take two on the grey mechleth, I'm quite happy with that, uh, as I said, you know, that orange peeling effects kind of happened, it kind of does give it a bit of like a brushed steely kind of a, th you know, a bit of raw steely kind of effect, so I'm probably just going to keep that for now, um, maybe in a future one I might try and perfect the varnishing technique, or maybe use, maybe use a brush on or something like that, but yeah, I'm not really happy with that tin can. It just blurts this crap out and it just goes everywhere. I might go with the Alcad one because at least I can use an airbrush. Airbrush doesn't have quite as bad that pitting effect. I could control it a little bit better, but on the whole, I'm really happy with that. This time, however, it's going back on the hook. I'm going to leave it up there and it's done with so things to do finish off the buckle clean these two up edit this uh, I'm still doing the course so I've got a charity event on this week and I've got a charity event on next week In all seriousness, um, that's progress. That is really good progress. Um, I'm just going to leave it up there for now. It should be fully dry. Um, I shouldn't have any more issues with it, but just to be certain, I, I literally want to get at least one done. I'm tempted to rub the white one down a bit and go over that with some of the white uh, enamels that I've got. So. Just the same as the black, just with the white. Let that cure off and go with the graphite rub on that. Because if you, if white is just that issue, that's it. I'm not going to bother with the white anymore. Uh, that being said, I do think the grey has the same sort of issues. I was noticing it a bit more as I was doing it. Then you don't notice it on the black. But I was noticing that, so I just kind of had to re reapply some graphite back onto those areas and rub them down. Apply, rub down, reply, rub down, and it seemed to work a lot better. I was, I was getting none of that with that. So it's probably just a matter of it hides the crimes. I'm going to fully admit that. But it works. I'm going to leave it for now. So I need to, of course, I have like three trips to Bunnings and I forgot to go get some spray adhesive. And uh, this jar is a little bit empty. I do have some cheap, 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 cheap contact adhesive up top somewhere. Oh, I think I've got a couple of tubes over there, so I might just end up, you know, getting through them and just knocking them out. <sighs> Still a lot to do, but um, yeah, my priority is getting Ralph done by the end of the month. Well, specifically, I want to get it done by the end of the week. I've still got a shirt to sew. I've got to get this buckle done so I can fit the belt and the coveralls are done. Oh boy. Got a lot to do and very little time to do it. But that's kind of the fun. Anyway, um, I managed to turn a colossal failure into a somewhat win. So, on this day of fail, uh, I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, 